this is my presentation, my master's project. Let's talk about intimacy, counsellors versus non-counsellors. This is an overview of all the topics that are going to be covered in the presentation. For anyone that is interested, a full reference list can be found in the handout located in the description and also again at the end of the presentation. All figures that are shown here are original to this presentation. This study had two hypotheses, the first of which is that counsellors will differ to non-counsellors on openness and also on intimacy attitude scales. The second of these hypotheses was that openness will be related to intimacy attitudes. Both of these hypotheses are non-directional by design because of the exploratory nature of the study. Two key terms for the presentation, the first of which is intimacy, which is defined as a feeling of closeness that can be sexual, social, romantic, emotional or psychological. It permeates a relationship across contexts and is characterised by the reciprocation of trust and vulnerability, for example, sharing secrets. The second of which is openness, which is the personality trait that is embodied by a person's curiosity, how they feel about novel experiences and their desire to explore their inner emotional world, the need to enlarge one's experience. But why were these two topics chosen for a counselling project? Intimacy was chosen because it is built into Maslow's hierarchy of needs, meaning that for a client to progress according to this hierarchy, any problems in intimate relationships would need to be addressed. And as established in previous slides, these intimate relationships encompass a whole breadth of experiences. Additionally, intimacy is linked to psychosexual dysfunction. That's, that, that's things such as erectile dysfunction and vaginismus, to name but a few. Intimacy has also been found to have a protective effect with trauma and is associated with increased resilience, which would be beneficial to counsellors to reduce the distress their clients may be feeling, either directly because of these experiences or by improving resilience to challenging situations. However, this resilience is also useful to counsellors because they can improve their response when thinking about things like secondary trauma. Now on to openness. Openness has been linked to counsellors, but also more broadly to a choice of professions. Typically, counsellors do score higher on openness, but this evidence can be mixed according to Fletcher and Degadillo. Moreover, certain qualities associated with openness would be beneficial to counsellors, such as awareness of feelings, empathy and curiosity. And according to Wheeler, openness can even be a predictor of future skill as a trainee. Intimacy within counselling could be viewed as particularly important because according to Barbara and Hall, it is one of eight key areas in which a client is likely to withhold information. This is attributed to a lack of openness across the helping professions. Moreover, challenges with intimacy are also associated with increases in anxiety and depression, which are common problems within the counselling space. However, when talking about a intimacy, counselling is behind other professions in its openness, according to Burns, Singh and Witherspoon. Moreover, openness has been linked with increased disclosure within therapy. Those counsellors that are more open are more likely to disclose themselves and as a result are more likely to promote disclosure from their clients. This is attributed to clients feeling safe to discuss challenging topics, for example, intimacy. The therapeutic relationship is a way in which a client can feel safe within the therapy room to discuss challenging topics such as trauma, according to Dallenberg. The next section of the presentation is about the method of the study. Firstly, the sample. There were 227 respondents to the initial advert. The advert was found either through email, word of mouth, or through the Sonos system if there were Banger students. The Sonos system is a system by which Banger students can obtain credits towards their course by completing studies. However, some results had to be excluded for a variety of reasons, such as not completing the study. After these exclusions, 167 responses were left. The sample had a mean age of just over 27 years old, and the sample was split with 131 female participants, 33 male, and 3 non-binary participants. Figure 1 is a pie chart showing how much of the sample were counsellors versus non-counsellors. The counsellors, shown in purple, were numbering 36, and the green were non-counsellors, and there were 131 of those. This study used two different measures, the first of which is the Intimacy Attitude Scale Revisited by Amden et al. This scale has four subscales, Tendency to Intimacy, Fear Intimacy, Attractiveness and Escape Intimacy. Both Fear Intimacy and Escape Intimacy were negatively scored, but this will be discussed later on in the presentation. Openness was measured using the Big Five Factor Scale by Goldberg. All participants completed both measures, one after the other, 
and each measure used a five point Likert scale as illustrated in figure two, which shows the breadth of responses that are available to be given. Both measures use reverse scoring to reduce the risk of confounding results, such as through things like repetitive scoring. And there's the procedure. All participants completed the study online, accessing it through an advert as outlined earlier. Once they clicked the link, they were redirected to an information sheet as illustrated in figure three, which shows the progression through the study from the information sheet. Once they'd read the information sheet, they could go onto the consent form. This was so they could provide informed consent. It was made clear the aims and the subject matter of the study, as we understand that intimacy can be quite an intense topic. Then the study progressed onto demographic questions before leading onto the measures. Finally, the clients viewed the debrief sheet, which had contact numbers for the student researchers, relevant staff members, and support systems. They were also signposted to where they could voice concerns or distress. Participants were reminded of their right to withdraw and were not penalised if they were gaining credits through the SONA system if they did decide to withdraw. The slide about ethics. The study went through Bangor University ethical approval and was in line with the BPS Research Ethics Code and also generally with the BACP ethical principles. The study went through all these ethical procedures to ensure that the risk of harm to participants was minimal. This slide is the beginning of the results section. Everything on this slide relates to hypothesis one, the difference between counsellors and non-counsellors on openness and attitudes towards intimacy. They were all assessed with an independent samples t-test. The only difference that was tested that was not significant between counsellors and non-counsellors was attractiveness. The rest were significant. So for example, openness and total intimacy score were significant to the p is less than 0 0.001 significance level. Counselors and non-counselors differed at the P is less than 0 0.01 significance level for tendency to intimacy and escape in intimacy. And then finally, at the P is less than 0 0.05 significance level for fear intimacy. This slide relates entirely to hypothesis two. There will be a relationship between openness and int intimacy attitudes. This was measured using a Pearson's correlation. Here you can see the significant relationships between openness and tendency to intimacy at the P is less than 0 0.01 significance level, and also openness and total intimacy, whose relationship was significant at the P is less than 0 0.05 significance level. There were no other significant relationships between openness and the intimacy subscales. Now on to the discussion. First, the openness, which was found to be higher in counsellors than non counsellors which is consistent with findings from previous research, such as by Degadillo et al, Fletcher and Degadillo, and Finley. This may be due to people with higher openness being drawn to certain careers, such as what was found by Marin et al, where higher openness scores in medical students were linked to pursuing careers in the mental health field, such as psychiatry. However, it is unclear whether there is a mechanism that openness may be drawing people to these careers or whether the training from these careers increases openness. As Schwaber et al found, that openness tends to increase over the course of people's lives but this effect is not consistent across everybody. Some people's openness increases more quickly than others or to a greater extent, and this is mediated by their life experience, such as people that pursue higher education or that travel more. Future research could analyze openness in prospective counselors and qualified counselors to see where they sit before and after training. Moreover, openness was linked to increased proficiency in counselors with those that were found to be higher in openness before completing training, being rated as more proficient afterwards. However, this is not true universally, as the highest levels of openness were actually negatively correlated with client perception, especially when not mediated by something like agreeableness or conscientiousness. The first was by intimacy attitude subscales, and it was found to be higher in counsellors than in non-counsellors. The tendency to intimacy is related to mutual disclosure, trust, and also empathy. All of these things are useful attributes for a counsellor to possess, as those that score higher on these metrics would be related to being viewed more positively by clients, and as a result, more likely to be disclosed to by their clients. Empathy is also viewed as a crucial aspect of the counselling process by Elliot et al, Howick et al, Young and Kelber and Shorts, 
and also by the BACP Code of Ethics, which requires the councillors operate empathically, which may result in these increased responses to the empathic aspects of intimacy within councillors as they're used to operating in these ways. For example, Vesentini et al. report that there is an inherent intimacy in the therapeutic relationship and this psychological intimacy is part of the process. Rogers' core conditions also involve this emotional closeness, which is closely linked to intimacy, showing the client that you can understand and be with them in their frame of reference. The next intimacy subscale was fear intimacy, which as it was negatively scored and negatively worded, the significantly higher scores of counsellors meant they were less likely to fear loss of control and rejection. Smith attributes this to not no fear, but a manageable amount of fear, as to accept that loss of control and potential rejection keeps counsellors focused in the sessions. Smith suggests this is related to the internal process of supervision, managing your own emotions within these moments. Bl Blundell also suggests that counsellors control these emotions by implementing their own boundaries. However, it may be that further research into this measure means that things that were not tested by this measure could be present, which could be measured by something like a semi-structured interview. Smith scored in the same negative way as was fear intimacy, which means that counsellors were more likely to display trusting behaviour and be more accepting of intimacy. This means that if counsellors are congruent and display this to their clients, that they would encourage trust from their clients, as suggested by Knox and Hill. Therapists therefore can develop a healthy relationship with escape intimacy, can trust their clients who in turn are more likely to develop a positive relationship with their therapist. However, the inverse of this is also true. Non-counsellors would not be as trusting as counsellors, and this should be reflected in the way that counsellors behave in the therapeutic relationship, attempting to build trust and model this behaviour so that their clients can share things. The final intimate scale is the total intimacy attitude, where counsellors scored significantly higher than did non-counsellors. This is beneficial to counsellors due to the protective effect of intimacy on burnout. Levadier et al. found that any form of intimate relationship can help protect against burnout, which includes a counsellor's relationship with their clients. Moreover, Lomonoska and Guten also found that this relationship can be built either online or in person, meaning therapists and counsellors that work across different modalities can experience these benefits. This is important because burnout is a really big problem across many different mental health professions and is mediated by personality factors. However, it has been referred to by Simpson et al. as a global problem, which suggests that positive client relationships can increase resilience for both the client and the counsellor, regardless of whether the therapy is online or in person. Now for hypothesis two, which is related to the second slide of the results section, the relationships. So the there was a general relationship between total intimacy and openness, which implies that as people are more open, they become more accepting of intimacy generally. However, there is very little literature available on this link. In addition to this, none of the subscales, save for tendency to intimacy, were related to openness. Therefore, it is clear that there are other factors that are affecting intimacy attitudes, as openness is only part of the broader picture, as there is still a difference between counsellors and non-counsellors, to further investigate this difference, other literature has looked at age, gender, religion, and other personality factors. Future research may be interested in combining all these different factors and seeing how that affects attitudes towards intimacy between counsellors and non-counsellors. Tendency to intimacy was significantly linked with openness, which is consistent with findings that openness and empathy are related to each other by Song and Chi because tendency to intimacy is the factor of intimacy that is most closely associated with empathy. This would be important as displaying empathy could be considered a key facet of being a counsellor, as seen again in Elias et al. The link between openness and this aspect of intimacy may also mean that counsellors are more willing to examine their own feelings of intimacy in the relationship and reflect on them engaging in that same process of internal supervision that we were talking about previously by Smith. Also, it would be expected that clients that are high on both these measures would be more likely to engage in it themselves, the, that same process of internal supervision, and rate their counsellors more highly. Now we take that into consideration, and more broadly, the study, which is the importance of intimacy as a field in which counsellors can model success to their clients who may need it, 
and to be aware that when communicating these emotions that clients do differ from them and this may be a difficult subject for clients to talk about. Moreover, openness is higher in counsellors than it is in non-counsellors, which is related to certain skills and qualities that are useful to counsellors. However, the mechanism for this and the effect that intimacy attitudes have on it have not been researched, and further research could explore this interaction with a bit more causality, as this study was focused more on exploration of this interaction than anything else because there was nothing available in the literature. slides feel free to pause it here and read but again they are in the handout too everyone for listening to my presentation today and if you have any questions do feel free to post them down in the comments thank you